So the bow roll and what I call the bow hand release. A couple of weeks ago, I got a question from one of my patrons asking whether the release on the bow side when the bow is rolling, whether that is active, whether you should direct the bow with your hand and maybe direct the wrist down to the floor, or whether it's kind of passive and you just let the bow come out of the hand. They were also asking how to let the bow come out of the hand and how to practice this and, and not effectively grab the bow. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. So the first thing is how to avoid grabbing the bow. This is really, really key. And the essential thing here is to practice, obviously with a finger sling. The first thing you want is a finger sling. And this is a piece of rope effectively, or a bit of string that allows your bow to jump out of your hand. And then it's not gonna to fall to the floor when you don't grab the bow. So that's the first thing you need for this. If you're a complete beginner, you need a finger sling. I'm assuming you have that now, but maybe you're struggling with the kind of reflex of wanting to grab the bow. So the best way to do this, there's kind of two drills that I like to recommend. The very best way is a drill that involves another person. So you need someone else there to basically grab your bow. And what you do is you take your finger sling off and then you just have your hand in the bow. And then that way, when you shoot, if your hand is relaxed, the bow should fly out of your hand and effectively onto the floor. But in this drill, someone will be there alongside, as you can see in this demo GIF, someone will be alongside and they will catch the bow by holding the stabilizer. So this is a great drill because if you feel the bow kind of grabbing onto your hand and you're trying to uh, hold it back, then that means you're grabbing it and talking it with your hand on release. If the bow flies cleanly out of your hand and throws forwards and your assistant catches it nicely, then that means your hand is relaxed and you're not grabbing the bow. And you just repeat this drill until the bow flies out of your hand without you know, any talk on your hand, without you grabbing it. Really, really simple. The second one, which is a good one if you don't have someone to catch your bow, um, is basically the double bow roll drill. And you can see this in action here. It's what the name suggests, and I've talked about this many times. You shoot and you let the bow roll once, and then you let the bow roll twice. You might be thinking, okay, well, why, why does that help me with the roll of the bow and avoid grabbing the bow. Because on that second roll, you're effectively, if you grab the bow, if, you're, if you imagine you're shooting and you're having an issue with grabbing the bow, you will shoot, you will grab the bow, and then the second roll won't happen unless you relax your hand. And as the bow is swinging on that second time, that's gonna to start to train you and train your mind to say, okay, this is the feeling I need in my bow hand in order to avoid grabbing it and to allow it to roll. And eventually, after many times of repeating this, then you'll be able to do that on the first roll of the bow. So those two drills are really, really good for practicing how to allow the bow to come out of your hand and not grab the bow. Now let's move on to directing the roll and whether it is active or something passive. Now, when it comes to if it's an active movement versus a passive one, the short answer is the bow hand release is active the same as the draw side. So yes, in the shot, you're coming up to full draw and you're coming here and you're making sure you've got your good line and everything. And by having that line, you've hopefully set up the forces in your shot so that part of the release is a natural reaction. And you're not fighting against maybe a bad alignment, which makes the release want to come out. So that's on the draw side. The same thing is true on the bow side, i.e. by having a good bow shoulder line, you've aligned the force on the front and hopefully the bow naturally wants to jump out toward the target. So you're working with these forces, but that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. The release on both sides, on the draw side here, and then on the bow side in terms of the roll, both of them are still active. So it doesn't mean just because you've got into a line that you can kind of get to, you can get to release here uh, and you know expand and then just kind of like lose the direction. It doesn't mean that. What it means is you do the work to get the alignment you get those forces in line, and then the release is still active on both sides. Draw side is actively moving away and around the body, and there's many cues for that that I've talked about before. And then on the bow side, you're actively directing that towards the target. So what does that mean in terms of how would you direct it? What are some cues to do? The first thing I'd recommend is making sure you're moving the hands apart. And I talked about this in a previous video, but making sure that if the draw hand being led by the elbow is going away from the target, the bow hand is going into the target. So if the camera was the target here, 
the bow hand, if you imagine on release, this hand is going away and the bow hand, and you can imagine the sight is going into the target. So you're not gonna suddenly kind of punch like that, like I just did, but you're effectively, you set up the tension when you're drawing here. And as you expand, you keep stretching that tension out, stretching that tension out. And when you release, you don't stop that tension and allow it to collapse, you continue. So if I exaggerate, you come up, you're expanding that tension, you're expanding that tension, you're expanding that tension, you come in and you're still expanding that tension. And then on release, you're expanding it even more. So I hope that makes sense in that term. And the best way to visualize it to start with is imagining that sight going into the target. A brief interlude. If you're finding this video helpful, you'll love my Patreon content and my online video courses. Every week I make a new video, but the fourth video every time is exclusive to only my patrons. You can get access to these videos and loads more exclusive content on patreon.com forward slash online archery academy. As for the courses, these are perfect if you want to take your archery to the next level with fully guided step-by-step -step video lessons. I made one course for beginners specifically and one for advanced archers specifically. They cover everything you need to know to finally master your technique properly. Go to courses.onlinearcheryacademy.com to learn more and use code YouTube for 10% off at checkout. Now, once you've got the hang of that a little bit, and then also assuming with point one in this video where you're not uh, roll, you're not kind of grabbing the bow on the release anymore. If I assume you've got those two parts, now on the release, you've directed into the target, but you also want some direction of the hand and the wrist down to the floor. So the best way to demo this is with a, a trusty band here. So if I kind of, if I move so that you can see my hand here, if I give you an example of a passive shot where I'm not directing the wrist to the ground, it would be like this. And you can see I'm not doing anything here. I'll do that again. I'm not doing anything here. I'm not grabbing the bow, but I'm not doing anything. So in that example, on the release, what would happen is the bow would jump forwards and then the weight of the bow would pull the wrist downwards and direct to the floor. And that's okay, but you can direct it for a bit more consistency and a bit more of a good, uh, strong follow through and to maintain that sight to the target. Because if you have it completely passive, then over time it's gonna be easy for, for you to have some bow kickback and some reaction, and sometimes that can come into the shoulder as well, not being strong. So what you wanna do, it's good to demo this with a band because it shows you the exact movement. So this is what it would feel like internally to me. It'd feel like coming up and then on the release side, like that. So it feels like, and you can see there, directing the wrist to the floor. Crucially, that wrist direction is synchronized with this. So I'm gonna put the band down now and I'll show you. So you can do it even without anything. And this is a really good drill to do for yourself because you'll see the direction of the hand that you do. So say for example here, direct here. So just this drill, and this is on my website as well as another drill to do, just this, directing the hand. When you're doing that direction, it's really important to make sure that you're directing with your index finger and your thumb to the floor like that, rather than some people try and direct with the palm of the hand and they end up kind of doing this, and then the bow is not being controlled. If the bow is not being controlled, it will feel like it's gonna hit you in the, <laughs> the limb or the long rod is gonna hit you in the face. So by using the thumb, keeping the thumb straight, not allowing it to go back like this, keeping that thumb straight and then directing with the thumb and the index finger to the floor like that. And you can see that in this video here of the release from a couple of different angles. Doing that will help you control the roll of the bow so that it doesn't kind of move side to side and, and feel like it's gonna hit you. If you feel like the bow isn't being controlled on the release, a couple of things to check is that direction with the thumb and the finger, make sure you're keeping those straight, directing to the floor, but then also make sure your finger sling is the correct length. This is a bit of a tricky one, but essentially you wanna make sure that your thumb and your index finger can remain straight and there's just maybe about a centimeter of play between your grip the back of your grip and the string of your finger sling. And I'll show you a little clip here that you can see now of that kind of distance. So that's what you wanna look at when you're looking at the finger sling, the distance there and how much to kind of adjust that. So that's been a video on the bow roll. I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other topics that you want me to cover in future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.